live with three people who like Dario Nardi so much they bought his rather expensive book, <laughs> Keys to Self Leadership. And we were talking about SE today. No, no, no. Look at the title. SI. We were talking about SI. SI? I thought it was really NI. No, NI. Yes, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What would I be doing here if it was SA? <laughs> oh, I got completely mixed up. <laughs> so now, folks, we have the tricky thing of talking about a chapter without saying so much about it that Dario won't put a hit out on me. So we have to talk about it enough that you become enticed, that you buy the book, but actually give you enough stuff that's uh, useful to you. So... Uh, what we can say is we can talk about the cartoon that they've got. And I'll put it there, vaguely away from the camera so you can't actually see the text. But it says here, so um, a group of pilgrims travels many months to visit a sage on a mountaintop. The pilgrims enter the temple and ask, what is enlightenment? And the sage says, oh no, I'm looking at the TE chapter by mistake. Uh, the sage says... It's, you already know the answer. Yes. I relate to that completely. I do always know the answer. <laughs> Even when I was really young. <laughs> this, this hangout's in a doctor. It's hurt, but start with from my point, point of view. Point to Daniel. Point to Daniel, yes. yes. There, was, there were some bits in here that I've like sort of tagged as mega and F. Um, mm. So, have you got my, um, my notes in front of you? Have any of you got my notes? Yes. Yeah. I do. Right. One second. Because I've like added little bits. Uh, oh yes. Uh, just to big up this chapter. Um, we did the hangout. It's got over a thousand views. The NI hangout. Uh, it's my second most viewed typology video after the Dario interview. Uh, so the one where Dario and Victor are talking about NI, and I ask Victor what he thinks of Dario's book, but this book, Neuroscience of Personality, then the translation came through for Melina. Oh, he doesn't want to talk about that book. He wants to talk about this book, because Dario sent him a PDF of this book, and, and Victor was talking about how much he liked this chapter on uh, NI. So this chapter is... Galenko approved. Mm. This chapter mm. on NI. All but right. Is it, but is it Jonathan approved? So oh, that's the thing. <laughs> so I'm, I suppose we can mention these four things at the bottom. Uh, as you develop introverted intuiting, you will. I know. We're going to talk about you straight away. Envision an energizing future. Mm. So, do, so Jonathan. So, folks, Jonathan is. NIFX or INFJ and mm -hmm. Rachel is probably uh, FENX or uh, ENFJ and the reason why I put the, the, the X in there is that as you know INFJs are very good at FI, they don't value it but they're very good at it and ENFJs are very good at any but they don't um, value mm -hmm. it Right, so what, you, what about that bit there? Envision an energizing future. Yes. <laughs> and what does that look like for you? An energizing future. Well, given how lazy I am, almost any future I visualize will be more energizing than me. Uh, but... Well, the thing is, I'm not sure if he means that NI types always visualize an energizing future or if he's saying we should visualize an energizing future. Like he's talking about developing self leadership, as he puts it. So maybe he's saying that if you develop NI properly, then your futures will be energized rather than uh, your futures being laid back or in a completely alien place. Um, based on the back of the book, where you've got like one of the final quotes, you've got someone talking about um, business, 
when someone says succeeding in today's business environment makes yes. me think that this book is slightly angled towards the self-improvement crowd. Maybe a lot of Enneagram type threes, maybe. Maybe just something. Yeah, that are looking towards, and so it is angled towards that mm -hmm. type of mentality. So a lot of the functions, like like when it describes TI, it talks about TI in a, what is the practical benefit of TI? And then, mm -hmm. then it's like, what, is it, like it, it angles things like that. So, But it is a combination of the fact that Dario has got a business mindset already. Like, so for instance, he publishes his own books, he has his own companies, he likes Peter Schiff, so he's got a business mindset. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he's in that gamma quadro, and the fact that eight keys to self leadership, it sounds a bit like that already, yeah. just from the title, from awareness to action, that it's about practical things. Whereas, like, and I, if yeah. I, if you were appealing to INTPs, it would be just, oh, this is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's always like this chapter isn't really for me; it's for everyone who's not me, who's not an INT. It, it also That's get you. How I, felt. I felt the same way. Like like, I already, is, I'm like, I. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, anyway, sorry. See, we're in the oh. same way. I love that. What? <laughs> Synchronicity. Across continents. <laughs> <in all places. laughs> mm. So, um, an energizing future. So, so, what do you think that means, Rachel? An energizing future? Because to me, that's too NFE. Um, I, don't, I, don't know what that, NFE? I, don't, I don't know what that means. An energizing future. Well, <laughs> well, for me, I I feel like I definitely sense that. Um, I've kind of moved around a lot, traveled a lot, and uh, it's always like when I get to the next place, I'm. I'm more energized about what could possibly, like, what could happen in the future with where I'm going and what I'm trying to kind of narrow in on, and I feel like I'm getting closer to it, maybe, and that kind of energizes me. Um, it's like I'm constantly waiting for this particular vision of my life to come into fruition, and so, like, it, I guess that excites me um, and drives me to, to go towards that. Um, that. That's how I feel. I think he's talking about a future full with activity, like a a f a f activity and productivity. So, what you're doing, imagining all the stuff you're going to be doing years, months from now, or years from now, or plan out your future, that sort of thing. Is it about productivity? I think that's what he means. I mean, yeah. When I'm again, gonna... again, Again, well, given it's the table book, it is... In the yeah, I mean, well. some of these things, like, and especially on the next page, some of these things are like, oh, well, this fits the, like, the NFE version of NI, and this fits... So this fit, this is more NFJ, and this bit's more NTJ. See, I actually think the Envision and Energizing Future is more INTJ, or NTJ, as if... You know, I think that's, like... Uh, like, Envision all the projects you'll be doing in the future and all the businesses you'll have. And feel, feel, feel free to bring Enneagram in, but not too much Enneagram. <laughs> it's a, Dario has a three in his tri-type. Right. I, I am fairly sure. Just in the oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, it yes. Keeps to, it keeps it so weird. I don't think... Oh, I, don't, yes. yeah. I, don't think See, I think... I think I relate to the energizing word because I'm using a lot of FE. I mean, for, for my future, I think of, I mean, what, what I ideally want is I would love to be a part of, like, a community, really, like, that's why I've moved to a smaller city that does a lot of local uh, food and, like, gardening, sustainability stuff, and I'm really the future and me being uh, a more sort of, uh, I want to be an integrated into my community and and closer to the people around me, and and when I think about that, when I think about like where I want to be in my, in my vision, I'm thinking of being closer to people and more connected, and so that makes me really energized. But maybe that's because I'm an extrovert or an extrovert feeler. Uh, mm -hmm. But I definitely use an eye to look to the future and then be energized by that possibility, um, you know, of seeing that actually coming into fruition. 
but it's not about productivity for me, but I definitely think for an INTJ, because uh, my, my roommate's an INTJ, and that's all he's thinking about, and he's, that's, that's what he's energized by. He didn't like that I was out there having my, having my hangout, because he was trying to make his eggs, and it was throwing off this whole morning routine. Uh -huh. So, if I was to quote what Rachel has just said, and I was like, write it all out, and if I was like to tag it, NI and FE, nearly every single sentence would be like tagged with either FE or NI, because it was like so much of those two functions were in that statement. It was like so compacted with like, that's the F F F E N I F E like so compacted in there. It was like pure ENFJ stuff. I want to be part of my community, and I see myself at this point. <laughs> so yeah, you could really see the two functions at work in that little statement you gave. Now the thing is, ENFJs maybe also though might change the way they talk to give the person what they want. So I have to be careful with you, Rachel. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> but that's why I've been so confused about my my own personality type for a long time because I I do that. I I can convince myself that. Of whatever so, to be so, like what I need to be. Yeah, so we'll have to watch that out in future videos to see how the language <laughs> changes to build the functions. It will. Yeah, it will. Uh, right, so you're looking at my uh, notes mm. at the moment. So um, you've got uh, have greater awareness of your own and others' inner potential. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like poor energy. Just a, just a smidgen. Just, just a bit. Smidgen. Yeah. Or maybe an INT joke. They have potential to be useful to me. Yeah, they. <laughs> yes. Yes. Less living with a roommate. That's INTJ, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not like their inner human potential, like in that more sort of. Who could they be? Can they have their dreams fulfilled one day? Mm. They don't really mm. maybe think about that side as much. I, see, do, I, but. I, I don't mind INTJs. As you know, it's ENTPs and the STPs that I don't like. I don't mind the FEPs. Oh, I don't mind INTJs. I'm always friends with INTJs. They're funny. I just pick on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're not perfidious. They're honest. They come across as more honest. <clears throat> you know where you are. Which I like. Mm. ENFJs are the supervisors of INTJs, so it's kind of... Yeah, we, they we talked a little bit about that last night. Yeah, they do kind of pick in INTJs. Yeah, <laughs> it's just to help them. It's like, I feel like I'm helping. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, don't know. I don't know how much you want to talk about that, because your roommate might um, yeah. miss the video. Yeah, I would like to get his opinion. No, he won't. I would like to get his opinion on that, actually. You know, does he think you're helping him? Or... <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. Well, a lot of the times he'd probably say no, but uh, <laughs> but he does ask for my help quite a bit with his work. Oh, like, mature! All the kind of stuff. That's good. All the kind of stuff that he's not good at, like the extrovert of feeling stuff, like relating to people, or like a design issue, like he's not how he should make something look, like graphics and stuff for his website, stuff like that. That's great. So an INTJ <laughs> that asks for help automatically, they're just for healthy. me. I don't think That's a healthy else. sign. That's a healthy sign. An INTJ that asks for help. Hmm. That's a healthy yeah. sign. Yeah, that's a healthy person. While, while, we're at it, while we're at it, I can show uh, the inside of the head of the INTJ. We were having a look at this last night. Uh, uh, the, was, is that it? Yes, that's it. The INTJ's brain. And I, and I really do quite like these diagrams. Some of them are better than others, but I really particularly like, especially in relation to this book. Someone's posted something in the side. Has someone posted a message in the side? Let's have a look. Is it one of you two? Probably is. One of you posted. Oh, that was old. Oh, right, that was eight. earlier. That, that yeah. second has already been given. <laughs> right, so here, and this relates to this book written by an INTJ. Scientific schemes to interact with people. See, I know. So I know of quite a few INTGs who aren't okay. that into science. If it's like NLP, it's like Dario is massive into NLP, and he wrote a paper in two thousand and three 
So he's been into it at least 13 years. And unfortunately, when I did the interview with uh, Dario, the actual the, the real thing was three hours long, but the second half didn't record. And the second half was a lot of NLP stuff. And we actually went through uh, the chapter in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Dario has never read it before about the you know about the infinite probability drive. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and because we're talking about transcontextual thinking, it's, it's a shame that bit never got recorded. So, how true do you think this is? I honestly, this is quite spot on. And I said about Roman the Plant, because what happened was when I tagged someone, it must have appeared on their timeline, and Roman the Plant put a comment saying, oh, this is asinine and all this kind of stuff. And then I wrote, oh, I think you've finished so quite well, Roman. <laughs> Where's the grandiose? The only thing I don't see is like the future. That it doesn't have anything about the future. Like they're trying to bring some kind of master plan. They're always mm. having like this master plan. Well, well, maybe chess moves. Chess moves. Okay, yeah, everything's chess moves. So, yeah, I guess. I, that's, I thought, actually, that's actually cheese moves. Cheese moves. <laughs> yeah, that, that book is a little bit like the Maximum Power book. In that, I think they put some deliberate misspellings in there. Yeah, unless it's someone funny, who's I not guess. using, unless someone's not using English as a first language. Mm. <laughs> but I think I think it's I think it's a little bit like the Maximum Power book. Or maybe INTG is really just to give it cheese a lot. Yeah, it was. They might. In their mind. Mm. I don't know what's going on in there. Strategizing with <laughs> cheese. But, but these <laughs> theme here. Complex thoughts that nobody else understands because they aren't intelligent enough. Yeah, that's pretty normal for me. Oh, fantastic. We have Maria here in our hangout talking about NI. Fantastic. So, yeah, this, so we don't want to say be too, be too mean about INTJs because Maria's married to one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, so I can relate to the complex thoughts right. that no one understands. Yeah. I wouldn't say because they're not intelligent enough. I'd say it's because I'm not good at articulating it enough. That You're going to be more self critical. Yes. You're going to be more, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, and if we compare, like, it's got this huge section on goals in uh, INTJ. And uh, just to compare... Uh, right. We're looking for SI now. Their secret love to cats. Love of cats. Now, I thought this bit was so accurate. With, now, this isn't a sharp, but I love this insight here for the ISTJ, capability to achieve their goals, but their actual goals are mm -hmm. tiny. And that's what I notice about ISTJs, that they have all this ability, but they don't have these goals. Because mm. they, they can similar. be like any grandfather. They can learn a, a bunch of stuff. Any, anyhow, we'll, we'll do separate videos on the heads. Cause on the, oh, we can show the INFJ head. Now, the I, INFJ head's yeah, not quite as good. good as the... Right, so... Right, that's NE. Right, this might be it. That's it, INFJ's brain. This one's what not... What? Now, right, you had an insight of last night about why, it, why it's got TV on there. The TV. background being able to see this. That's because I TV was my third parent. So I just wonder how true is that TV on the brainstem? In my in my case, yes, yes. too true. Yeah, what is that? Mom, 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 look at now, there's yeah. probably people here who understand Russian who are probably thinking, that is so cute, what that child just said. But to us, it's just oblivious. <laughs> Marvellous. I think I might... I might uh, uh, now, are I going to be directive and mute Maria's mic while she's speaking Russian? Right, although she's done it herself. Go right. to yourself. So, um, I don't know how I, true this is. I, I don't think this is as good as... Oh. Go on, Maria. I said that... Yeah, um, you muted it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know this. It was, uh, like, the mute was off. Um, I will oh, that's it. fine. Yeah. Oh, excellent. 
<laughs> and the benefit of that is that whenever Mir whenever Maria switches her mic back on, it's almost like raising an electronic hand and saying, "I wish to speak," because I actually had that when I was in a uh, I was invited to a hangout with Kirill Kravchenko, who is like influenced by Victor but independent, officially. Um, where, and in actually in the hangout, if you wanted to speak, you actually had to like press a button to like raise an electronic hand. So it was a little bit. So it's the equivalent of that. Uh, so I don't know how true this is. What do you think of this, Jonathan? What? Of this, of this, of this brain for the INFJ. What? <laughs> mm. I love all the suspicions. There's so many suspicions. <laughs> Why do you love it? It's kind of bullshit. I mean, it's kind of related. It's not as bullshit as you think. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, this is more like an Enneagram Type 6, maybe. I no. Don't know. It's not quite... No, it's quite accurate. <laughs> maybe. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is, a comedy, it is a comedy brain map, after all. Rather than... Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah, suspicious about reality, yeah, that's true. I mean, I wonder, you know, did I just pop into existence five seconds ago? Or are you all horrible, horrible things in my imagination? That would make a lot of sense sometimes. Yes. All those philosophical ah, thoughts. Right. So do you think this would match, like, because you're Enneagram Type 1, and we're Enneagram 5. Hmm. Uh, yeah, save the world, because you're perfection, you're a reformer. Yeah. Analyzing others, understanding others. So, TV, yes. Uh, I was seeing TV in my my other parent, unfortunately. That was that was not the fault of my parents. That was just me. I was just addicted to the television. They wanted, my mum and dad wanted me to go outside and play more and more friends, but TV was more interesting. So. It's a bit, there's a TV show called Why Don't You? And it was like, why don't you switch off the. TV and do something instead while well, we're watching the program. <laughs> Cold. Yeah. About switching the TV off. Yeah. yeah. I don't watch TV, period. Uh, that's kind of the way I was raised. We uh, didn't really have it on for any considerable but, time. And every mm -hmm. time it was on, it seemed so uh, boring and kind of. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But Maria, what TV, you were watching Russian TV. Robinson. Yeah, I, I tried to watch it here. I probably just cannot really relate. Yeah. Uh, well, much. well, bear in mind, I grew up in the 80s. Yeah, right, so right now, oh, wait, I need to take a call. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, so... Uh, I have that uh, feature of central types that, um, that means that I'm mostly interested in something I can change or take some steps about. There is uh, not much I can do about uh, like presidential elections. Once I made up my mind, and don't, don't watch it anymore. Mm -hmm. Right, so folks, that means the central quad was the beta and the gamma value NI. NI and SE, so about change. Mm -hmm. There's change that you think is possible. That's, that's what I assume anyway. Um, Right, uh, so we it's have this. It's probably instead of TV, it should, it should have been Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. It probably takes some considerable part of my brain right now. <laughs> yes. So I, was, I, was, I resisted Facebook for years and years and years, and so that's just being shy and introverted. But now it's just I'm waiting for the thing to do something, do something, do something. Yeah, and now what you get is a situation where you've got introverts in Hangouts full of a bunch of other introverts connecting. Or going... Or, or being just quite as special going... If they, so if they had an introvert club where you lived, Jonathan, would you go to it? No. I'm, I'm intro, this is the introvert club. <laughs> being a... When the saga ends, that's the introvert club. Right, so we've got this thing of... Um, I don't know how much we talked about this. I don't know if we finished this off. Oh, yeah, I can ask Mira this first one. Mira, do you envision an energising future? Um, well, 
I guess so, because uh, you need to feed off something. In this case, it's the uh, future. I, I read somewhere that uh, it was a good thought that the future is uh, important not because it uh, will necessarily come true, I mean the future you envision, but it, it's more important because it gives you the reason and that energy to uh, do stuff. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. And so even, even if you don't achieve the goal, then, uh, right, that makes sense. It's like a mountain climber has to uh, have the support going way up there, uh, ha even higher up than he's going to climb. Or a writer or an artist with failed projects, they learn things from those failures. And the people will say, when they eventually have a success, they'll say, Oh, how did you do this? And he says, well, I learned a lot from all of these mistakes mm -hmm. that I made along the way. Yeah, I can subscribe to that. I, I have written like a lot of half poems which actually got uh, combined into something more interesting. Right, so as long as you get good feedback. So, uh, so for instance, someone writes a novel that doesn't go very well. They make sure they get good feedback. They they canvass it from lots of other people, find out their opinions, uh, and then find out what the errors are and adjust to the audience. Then that's uh, a good thing. There is one more aspect to that. Actually, a lot of, at least astrology says that uh, a lot of people are actually built um, this way. They uh, learn a lot about a particular art by doing it, not necessarily uh, having the result that they can share, but by by doing, they learn a lot about the art itself. Yeah, that that they would expect it. yeah, and that is, and Dario has mentioned that that very much suits the um, what we would call in socionics um, the static sensing types, the artisans. Um, that very much because they the, that he would say they learn by doing. The, uh, the artisans. Like learn, so, for instance, uh, and of course, they probably improvise a bit more. I may have talked a little bit last, last night about how uh, the Guardian, the static sensing types, the SI Max types, or the SI Ego Row types, uh, they like to do the same thing practice, 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 practice as musicians. Maybe the, uh, the, the SP types like to jam more, improvise, learning through jamming. That sort of thing. Have you ever done any of that, Jonathan? Like any kind of musical instrument or anything? I always wanted to, but never really. Yeah. Sadly, I hope hopefully in the future one day I will learn a musical instrument. Probably, okay. I always went to do the, I've got a keyboard next door that's been there for too many years. I don't know, I've been touched, so I need to do it. Oh, so many sads. Things they haven't done. <laughs> Just put my mood down. <laughs> but I would think, just just from a speculative point of view, I mean, we know how SJs would approach music. That they're going to do practice, 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 practice by the book, and that's probably why in classical, your classical musicians, you've got a lot of Asian, you've got a lot of Chinese, Japanese musicians now playing classical instruments. Uh, and I was thinking, now, part, part of learning an instrument is, even if you're an artisan, you've got to learn, so an SE Max type, SE Ego type, static sensing type, that um, you, you got to learn some kind of technique. But a lot of them you'll hear like, I think Paul McCartney, he was said that he learned by ear. He didn't know how to read music, and it was George Martin. He recently died. Lots, lots of lots of people have died this year. Famous people. Uh, that um, he had this huge background in classical music, and uh, actually, oh, just a little bit of digression. But Paul McCartney's father actually would always train up Paul to like increase his word power learn more words and, and I think I think an artisan musician would do more jamming 
more learning, like a bit more like jazz, more improvisation and things like to try and freshen it up, rather than it be um, mechanical. And I suppose the artisan's ability to be in the moment, to like totally focus on the instrument, to not have any kind of distractions from other other processes, enables them to be skillful. And plus, they like being in that zone as well. But I just wondered if there was a difference there. Anyhow, speculation. Uh, speaking, speaking of Paul McCartney, I read a great deal about the Beatles um, when I was young. And uh, uh, they said about them that John Lennon did most of the creative work in his head. He would speculate about what he's going to say and so on. And uh, uh, the way McCartney dealt with it, it was how you describe artisans. He would just yeah. play the instrument and try to do stuff. Yeah. And yes. work. Yeah. No, I think, I think, I think the Kersey people would type Paul McCartney maybe as ISFP. Like that, yeah. Oh, yeah, and also... Uh, ah, yes. Yes, launcher function, ISFP. for Because ISFPs can go into this weird NI mode where he... Like, Paul McCartney had a whole song in his mind that he woke up and just dreamt. I think it was yesterday. And he had, like, most of it already... In, or he dreamt most of it. Hmm. So that's like ISFP going into that NI mode. I wonder how. I wonder. Well, we could ask that. Find out from ISFP how much stuff they actually dream that they create. And as you know, oh, maybe we could do more. Dario needs to do more research on this. How much do people go into an NI mode when they're dreaming? Especially ISFPs and all these different other types. That'd be very mm. interesting. Because Dario does mention that later on in this chapter about sleeping on something. To maybe try to find a solution to something. Um, I can say that my launch function is uh, probably working when I sleep because uh, and have dreams because I remember seeing uh, very clearly a mistake that I made on the test last, uh, the night before in my dream. Right. I had a math test and, uh, I, and when, when I had um, the night after that I saw, I saw my, my mistake in the dream. Right. Um, Rachel and Jonathan, can you hear Maria's voice slightly distorted? Yeah. Right. right. So Maria, if you log out and then log back in again, it might improve. It's got this sort of like electronic distortion on it at the moment. What then do you mean by log out? Hanging up and the... Uh... Yeah, then coming back in. Okay. Right. Excellent. Right. Jonathan might have to grab a bite to eat if we're going to be going at this pace. We're on the first page. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, he could nip... Because we've got more than one... You know, we, we, Jonathan could nip out for ten minutes, get a burger, and then come back. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> 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 so we, we got, um, oh yeah, so did we, I mean that's an interesting one, uh, we, I think we talked quite a bit about that, so anything to add on have greater awareness of your own, other's inner potential? Did we do this one? Yeah, the second, on page 71, eight keys, sent the, where it was, because I remember we digressed a little bit on time, TJs I think. With that. and then because then we went yeah. on because then I went to the brain because I wanted to show the inside of the INTJ's head I thought it was quite funny that's right and so yes how much do you, do you like in like your relationships do you like concentrate on uh, people's potential and think oh I could, I could guide them so like a, a directive as Kersey would say a directive oh energy. gosh yeah everything uh, well, yeah. Uh, I, I think I think a lot of people would resent that if they if they knew how much I thought that. Ooh. So you know that's one of those dichotomies Kersey came up with in um, 
1985, I think it was, and of course, Linda Berens, being a good person, she actually writes in a book that when he came up with it and like she heard it from him, she got it from him, this uh, directive versus informing dichotomy that um, he came up with. And the, the, there's validity in that, in that in this book, the interaction styles where she divides, say, the NF temperament into these interaction styles, you end up with four types that Victor actually agreed with in terms of them corresponding to his profile. So, for instance, uh, I shouldn't really say this, but I'll say it anyway. Um, when I asked him, when I showed him, uh, like, INFJ, based on, it was like, uh, INFJ was, yeah, that match. So, basically, about three and a half out of four was a match with his, with his um, corresponding types. So, does, I think he said that overall, in terms of the Kersey iron types, they match up quite well with Victor's profiles. And I think maybe he said that the MBTI types don't match up quite as well. But the Kersey ones do. And of course, the Behrens ones are very close to the Kersey ones and the Dario profile. And Dario works extremely closely with Linda Behrens and he's worked with her since 1994. So there's a, there's a little tree of influence there that sort of starts with Kretschmer, Kretschmer, Kersey, Behrens, Nardi. Mm. Uh, and we were going to look at one last night, Rachel and I. It was. Uh, one of the translations from one of the types that, one of the traits that um, Kretschmer mentioned, and he mentioned jolly organizer. So I'll ask you, Jonathan, which type does that sound like, a jolly organizer? Mm. ENFP? Or, are we talking about SGs or S at any t Of any of the 16 types, if you, if you were to give you, if, if you were to give you, Yes, a jolly organizer. Yes, that's my thing. It really depends on what they organize because yeah. I, I do see both ENF, ENFP and ESFJ in that. Oh, uh, sorry. I should have said that that yeah, was within that's... the sensing types. I should have said that that was within that's the sensing true. types. See, see, I think you've asked me that before and I've got it wrong before. Yeah, I, I should have said that, that it was in the... Um... Not just with... Not just that. I've got it wrong a few times. I am a little bit self-indulgent, and I, in terms of talking about things I want to talk about, but I will. You may have noticed this trend. So a little bit on Kretschmer, where he actually so he decides them between cyclothymes and schizothymes. And where is it? Okay, that's the, that's. I'll just show this because it's cool. Because this is Dario's justification of the uh, Kersey temperaments. We were looking at that last night about the fact that intuiting types are cognitive based, sensing types are world based. And when you are when you are cognition based, the nature of that cognition is important, whether it's with um, uh, feeling or thinking, because there's more judging going on. Whereas when you're world based, you're more about perception, and therefore the nature of that perception is more important. And also, if we look at it from an empirical point of view, in the actual brain states, the tennis hop pattern is, a, is, is evidence a lot in SPs for a lot of the time. And the same with the SJ macro states. NI types don't really go into a trance that much. Otherwise, they look like zombies. Uh, I think it happened a little bit with Jonathan when he like listened to something. When it was that Peter Schiff thing. Oh, this is like he showed his like, listening mode. He had like, his little hands. He was like taking things in. So that was just um, me trying to look smart, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suggest people watch that habit. video. But it's a habit. Right, about a... What I was about Peter Schiff's dad getting this box of remains, a uh, box of stuff from his dad, and somebody else's um, stuff was mixed up in with it, and then if you watch the video, you'll find out who the person was who had their stuff mixed up with his father's. Uh, right, then. Okay, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you heard that as well. That. Yeah. Right, so this is, and I think, and I've said this before, that I think Ernst Kretschmer was an INTP because he tries to connect this book to all of knowledge ever, and it will enable us to know everything. There. 
the entire field of modern thought. <laughs> and it's also a wicked long sentence as well. <laughs> hmm. right. So, so are, you so you... that I, are you saying that INTPs like to have a theory of everything? No. How about David Kersey Jr., the original yeah. INTP? Because, we, well, because hmm. he has written a paper called Something on Massive Dissipative Replicative Structures, which is about how structures of organization repeat at different levels of the universe from the micros from the subatomic to mm. the galactic scale and it's like a model of everything within this order disorder edge of chaos all this kind of stuff super duper most intp paper you can imagine i was i was only asking because i came across this debate recently about whether but how celebrity types has stephen hawking is an intj but he might be an entp or ntp I don't know enough about the subject. I have to ask Wojtek. Wojtek's got a degree in, um, I think, yeah. the German equivalent of a master's degree in computational physics. So he's what I call a proper INTP as Wojtek. So he'd know more about that subject. So, yeah, so you've got the cyclothymes and schizothymes, and you can pretty much say that the schizothymes, they're, they're, they're describing the intuiting types there. Like, and I sort of overlaid it, where you can say, look, you know, any disagreement there in how he's organised them, in terms of how they correspond? Well, I don't know I disagree, I'm just thinking I'm getting hungry, maybe we should be back in topic. Okay, okay, yes. <laughs> I'm naughty. Yes. Right, I'm so... Bringing, tell, tell I'm bringing so. order to this any nonsense, do <laughs> We're still in, I mean, come on, we're still on the first, we're not even finished the first page of the poem. <laughs> Full lines. Hey, you little <laughs> lines. We can't even get to the bottom of the first page. We've done an inch, we've done an inch. An inch. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, um, how about this one, this might be more NTJ. Come up with innovative ideas that no one has thought before. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. And, and then I'll put a little note at the bottom. Uh, I suppose that is in opposition to buy the book SI. Because mm -hmm. the mentality is they're not looking for that. Yeah. Because if you've got the mentality of going by the book, you're not really looking for new ways of doing things. Yeah, and they're even just you, thinking, yeah. And even if you do have the idea, you'll probably ignore it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, so I imagine you could have a situation where you have an SJ, say ESTJ, ESFJ, where in their work environment they might have an idea, ignore it, because their overall motivation is to do things by the book. But maybe in their private life, then maybe their any side comes through a little bit more. They're like their tertiary any, and maybe a little bit more playful. Maybe they will do that, where you can see. That, because yeah, I, I think there's, a, I think there's a dividing line for SJs. I think it's like they want to rest because SI is about comfort. Where it's when they're off, it's not like the NTJs where they're working all the while. SJs is like I'm at home, I'm gonna relax. Now SP like Jeff might say a lot of the things that they do to enjoy themselves are boring in themselves, like gardening and stuff like that. Oh, that's that's interesting with Tony Clinton discussion. I'm just gonna bring this up randomly because. Apparently her hobbies are crosswords, Scrabble, gardening, and home decor. So she <laughs> says. I mean, imagine you know how much... Remember Gordon Brown lied? He lied yeah. about liking the Arctic monkeys. So we never know. I don't know he lied. He, you know these PR people will say, Oh, Hillary, say this. Say you like gardening. That will connect you with the mm. values voters. <laughs> Well, she was she was criticised because it made her sound boring. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, I think gardens like to garden. Maybe they should call them the gardeners. Mm. <laughs> they like to garden. Uh, they do. They love it because they're taking care of something. Yeah, my mom loves gardening. She loves plants. Is, she, my, is, she, is your mother ESFJ? Yeah. Definitely. Right, mine's yeah. ISTJ. 
Is, what, what's your mother, Jonathan? Is she an SJ? Both my parents are SJs, but my mother wants to garden more than she does. My dad couldn't really care less. <laughs> my dad will let it go wild. Weird. It's actually a bit of a shared garden, so... There's another thing going on. Yeah, my mum my mom would probably garden more if she had more time. So. Oh. Or, she'd, or she'd rather she would get the children and me to garden for her. Yeah. And, right, and then... Make you feel for not doing it. By the bottom we've got transform how you think... <laughs> so he thinks that if you in develop NI, you will transform how you think about life. Uh, and then, of course, we've got... Uh, hmm. So we can sort of go through this next bit. Oh, I don't think Dario and mine too much. Oh, I won't show a grab of it, but we can talk. So, for instance, we've got these exercises for assessing current development. So the first part are the, the basic exercises. I think he does it by, I think he says, basic... Oh, oh it does introductory, basic, then advanced. Can I, can I just say I love my mother very much and I respect her? I just, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> You've got to love the SJs. Love the SJs. It's no, in the off chat she sees, she sees this and she would be all bit upset by something I just said there. <laughs> right, okay. So what about, what about this, so this section here? How many, how many boxes are you uh, two ticking in that part one? This is the, uh, I think it's the introductory exercises. It's a little bit weird to have like introductory then basic. We could have just put intermediate, don't we? <laughs> Experience a sudden aha realization about a problem coming as a fruit out of nowhere. Yeah. Such as examples, please. I don't know. I forget them. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It, it's, it's totally. It's just run. the whole. It's the whole like. Okay, I'll be at work. And there's all this chaos happening, and uh, yeah. like, I, there's so many moving parts and things. To, so I just have to be like, okay, um, just like zone out, and then oh, so here's the next thing I need to do. I don't know. It just happens. I don't like have to. See, see for me, a lot of the time is a completely unrelated thing. I like, I'll be stuck in a problem or not pick up on something, and then. Hours or days or months, maybe even months later, I'll have this sudden realization going, "Oh, that." Oh, yeah, well, that happens to me too, all the time. Yeah. Like, way just... late, way late, and I'm like, "Oh." It's like, oh, this. Right. Um, got an interesting situation here because uh, Rachel is a an ENFJ, and as I say, one of the reasons why I'm a little bit pedantic now by calling the ENFJ the uh, FENX is you got a situation here where they're using any and ni. Mm -hmm. So when you said there, so when you do get these ideas, are you able to like split it up and say, this is coming from more of an ni place, this is coming from more of an ne place? Are you able to split it up like that? Have you got any uh, examples where you think, that's more of an ni thing, that's maybe more of an ne thing? Don't you have the new one? I'm sure we have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, but like, we have got a, a new one, but we don't want to go into too much detail. Okay. Oh, this hangout would be like twenty hours long. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll have, we'll have a little. We'll have a little look. We'll just have a little look for the audience. We'll have a little look at the any, and then. Uh, oh, look. There you go. There's the any creative. Yeah, the where uh, yeah succeeding where most people see no opportunity. Yeah, like I I end up in a lot of those situations at work where like everybody else in that same situation would get like so buried by stress and like the deadlines and how much stuff they have to move because I work a very physical job, uh, physical and mental, and uh, but oh I feel like it's easy for me to to determine like kind of it's not. Uh, how would I say? It's like I, I don't necessarily know what I'm doing, but I kind of go with my gut and I go, okay, this is going to have the probability of having the best turnout 
for the rest of the day, like with all the factors considered. I feel like I can consider a lot of different things at once. I don't know if that's related to this. Um, but uh, Maybe I can consider so many different factors and then come up with the best sort of solution. I think because these two things like work hand in hand, that it might be a case of possibilities involving people. Like, all oh, this person could do this, they could do that. I don't know how it... Well, yeah, that happens a lot. But, I mean, even in terms of just plain work and how to get something done, yeah. like where I'm overwhelmed, I can definitely come up with different... Yeah, I can definitely find ways out and ways to... But, yeah, I do tend to think about the people. It's like, well, what does it look like? Are my managers going to be happy? Is, is you know, are, is it going to look... I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to digress too much with this, but yeah, I, I definitely feel like there is a difference between the NE and the NI, and really it's as simple, I think it's as simple as the NI is just something very internal, and but the NE comes out more when I'm interacting with the world and exactly. other people. Yeah. Exactly, and so in your normal mode, the, the NI is bound, the, the NE, so is bound up with your FE when you're in your normal mode. And this is why Victor thinks that NE is more important than NI. However, you see, I'm on the fence on this. This is why I'm like FE, NX. Sometimes it's the NE, sometimes it's the NI. It depends on yeah. the mode. It dep totally in. depends on the mode. It totally, because in the same work day, I'll switch back and forth between those modes. Like, I'll know that I need to go into NI mode. Um, and like, it, it, like especially things start getting chaotic. It, it's too much going on. People are confused. Like people are getting stressed. I'll tend to withdraw then and go into NI mode and kind of like figure out how I need to be to help that situation, which is like the internal like transforming myself to sort of have a different perspective on, like, okay, here's how I need to approach this situation now, now that everybody's all stressed out and things aren't going right. Uh, yeah, that's a very NI thing there. Uh, I remember that. How, I thought it, NFJ thing, how I need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's one of the phrases that Dario uh, used in the, we don't want to get too distracted. Yeah, We're so, on the second anyway. page. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan might have to have a pit stop <laughs> to get some, but we'll let him go and come back because we, we've got to try and get through this. Right, so... Um, okay, let me just right. let me just grab my charger. I'm listening. Oh, that's i got to venture to the other room. Okay, that's perfectly fine. I will read through some of these and then we can uh, come back to it. Uh, now, this is where... So, for that one, I ticked... I, I gave that... I sort of shaded it, folks... I shaded that, that box full green. Okay. Uh, now for the next one. Feel attracted to the symbolic, archetypal, or mysterious. I gave that half a green. I gave that half a tick. So I give uh, that a oh, that's, that's all me. I do that all the time. So any examples? Everything I do. Make... Do, you, do you stare at the Enneagram symbol? Do you have like a big poster of it on the wall? And stare at it? I don't need to do I can just imagine it very easily. Yeah. But do you actually imagine it and like project onto a sort of Mandela? Uh, I don't understand what you, what you mean. Well, I mean, Dario thinks in one, I mean, one of these exercises might be where he actually thinks that if you have a symbol and look at it long enough that you move into an NI mode. Hmm. Perhaps. All, all sounds weird to me. Well, you're just not normal. Still normal than me. <laughs> I'm not an NF. I'm not an NFJ. Yeah, um, I, mean, I, just, I just think it's symbolic in like table terms. That's, that's the main thing. Any, any examples? I don't know. It's so normal. Like, just be thinking uh, of ar archetype. It's hard to explain to somebody who thinks rationally from yes. coming from somebody who thinks in images. Images have uh, a uh -huh. lot to do with archetypes. Yeah, Ben, you're stupid. That's why yeah, I can't okay. it. <laughs> now you go into like INTJ mode. Hmm. <laughs> um, so what but kind of symbols like, do you see? Images? It's, very, it's like... Sorry. 
Yeah, go on. Go on, Rachel. Oh, um, well, for me, I was going like, to say it's yeah. just very... It's like surrealism. Like, when you're half awake mm -hmm. and half asleep, like, I'll, I'll, fall, I'll be falling asleep, and all of a sudden I know you're having all these thoughts of, like... Or images, kind of, of, like... Oh, it's so hard to, de to describe. But they'll um, all, all of a sudden, all these different images mm -hmm. and seemingly unrelated things will be, like, this really important realization I'm about to have. And if this one little <coughs> thing were to just come in and click into that thing, then I would know, but most of the time it's all lost. It'll just be the most mm. random garbage, but it's like, it feels so, like there's shapes and there's, there are definitely symbols and things that are meaningful to me, but if I don't have that last piece, then they kind of go away. I think I showed the HR Giga stuff to you and said, oh, I dream that all the while. Is mm. that what you said? Yeah, that's what it's like. It's, yeah... Yeah, it's kind of like that. Still, I won't. I, won't I don't know, Jonathan. Do you relate to that? Like, I'll just yeah. show on the front cover. HR Giga. Oh, it's a little yeah. bit rude that one. Let's try to avoid that, folks. That bit in the middle. So. Okay. Just. <laughs> Alien porn. Okay. <laughs> I should. I should warn you. I'll be getting my dinner shortly, so. I yeah, and then. Some... Yeah, and then you can come back. All right. There uh, we go. There's a, a gun that fires babies. Out of it. <laughs> Probably INTJ. You're really well engineered that piece of art. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll leave and I'll watch on YouTube, so I'll be able to keep up with all you're talking about. Yeah, but are you? Will you be able to rejoin in say half an hour, forty-five minutes? Because yeah. I think we'll still be going. Yes, I can tell we'll still be going. Right, How excellent. much longer? Well, because I got to think about stuff I got to get done today too. Um, uh, Jonathan, when are when are you heading out? Not heading out. I've ordered something for dinner, so oh, a few okay. minutes. So oh, okay. I'll probably get my dinner in about five or ten minutes. And then I don't know when I'll be back. Probably ten half an hour or something. But my stomach start to feel well empty. That's that's fine. That's fine. You can come back in half an hour. So how much time are you? How much extra are you willing to give me, Rachel? An hour? Is that too much? Jonathan, you should uh, promise people that way. <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking. I'm like, I do have a lot to get done today. Oh, it's already been no. a couple of hours. Mm. Yeah. We're on page two. Oh, well, darn it. I know. <laughs> it's 13 more pages. <laughs> well, keep... keep Keep going, you know, keep going if you get some other people today. Well, and I'll definitely be watching. I might even pop in later. Uh, depends. I mean, maybe if you know some uh, other INFJs and ENFJs. Mm. It could, uh, n nice people, though. <laughs> I only know nice people, man. <laughs> right. Um, what about experience? A permanent premonition or, because you said you are interested in symbolic, archetypal, mysterious, all that stuff, yeah. like astrology and all that. Rachel, you're interested in that, aren't you? That weird yeah. NF stuff. Yeah, definitely. Your weird NF stuff. But it's like, <laughs> I don't, I don't try to take it, I don't try to make it more than it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's weird, but I'm not trying to say it's science or whatever, you know. Ah, so I wonder if that's a difference between the NFJs and INFJs, and the INFJs might take it a bit more seriously. Hmm. Well, in the Chinese, the Chinese zodiac, I'm a tiger, and there's a lot of that. There's a lot of the fact that I'm a tiger. I actually think like a, I'm a tiger, yeah. But, <laughs> Someone's got suggestive like SE. It's part of my identity. <laughs> Aspirational essay. Hmm. I think uh, I'm a horse, which yes. totally makes sense. Oh, I'll tigers be eating and food and I'll think fantastic. I'm chewing it like a horse. <laughs> tigers and horses go on fantastic. Oh, good. Right. <laughs> and then we've got uh, uh, section two. Uh, gain a profound realization from a mystical state or catharsis. Yeah. Isn't that normal? Doesn't everyone do that? Yeah, but... No. Any examples of these profound realizations to share with the world? <sighs> you 
you got a blog that you could direct us to where you could write all these down, these profound realizations? I wouldn't want to write them down, they'd be kind of. I'm not sure how I could write them down anyway. But just like, it's just my normal yeah. everyday. I just get lost in thoughts and absorbed in stuff. And, uh, I don't think about a problem, it's just. The way, the way it seems to me is that, oh, it's all really, it's a fantastic function, it's great stuff, Ben, but I can't tell you about it. Exactly. Perfect, you understand. <laughs> now you right, get we, it. Right, now we've got one that's maybe more NTJ. Push your mind to envision a solution to a problem that hasn't come up yet. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. Again, just... A lot of the time, just anticipating what's going to happen, and uh, I was thinking, I was, I think I was saying earlier that uh, in the future we'll all be SGAs because they'll figure out science will figure out how to rewire our personalities. That's the things that no one's thinking about. But uh, I need to go. Sorry. Well, over to you, Rachel. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, you broke up there a little uh, bit. Yeah, 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 so it's over to you, Rachel, for you, what you were going to say. Oh. Because you made a little um, noise that indicated I aspirational just... FE. I, I, I can sense you want to talk. Um, yeah, I, I was, oh, was going to say that. Yeah, I do that. I do that. It's, it's mostly with people, um, relationships. I'm like the kind of person that I'll just sit here. I'm the person that will ruminate over... Uh, something that happened earlier in the day, and I'll just be thinking about what does this mean for our relationship, what's going on, and then I'll start thinking about all these problems and, that aren't even real, aren't even happening yet, and then I'll start kind of trying to to fix those things, even though they they aren't even there. And so I've caused unnecessary drama relationships doing that. It's actually kind of not always... Uh, a good thing, trying to think about problems that aren't actually there. Right, so this next one, though, I think could be an example of, and it might be on my notes, or it might not, it might not be on your scan, is Dario may have got this confused with his creative TI, because he might not be able to see the forest for the trees, because he's using TI as his creative function, because he's written here, Synthesize a new idea that transcends various opposing points of view. But you see, that might be... Now, I would see that as that's NI working with TI, because you're synthesizing. Hmm. TI, because INTPs do a lot of that. And that might yeah. be TI working with NI. Some days it is, some days it just comes very automatically. I, I just will get a bunch of people arguing, and I'll see a point of view that no one seems to be considering. But again, yeah. but, but in INFJ, that, might be, but in INFJ that, that might be with TI as well, because TI launcher. Yeah, but I can I can do that in, just automatically instinctively, or I can do it after I've thought about it for a bit and worked things over and more TI things. So it's both. It could be both. I could say it could be NI on its own at times, yeah. and other times it's NITI. Because like, INFJ can go in like to a beneficiary shift to INTP, TINX. Yeah. So uh, I can ask you that. That one, I didn't really mark. I was kind of half on that one. That one, I wasn't. Hmm. It's like, yeah, I I want to do that more, but yeah, I don't feel like I do that as much. Maybe it does well, have something to do with the TI. Well, yeah, that's good. That's good honesty, that is, because then that sort of fits the idea that INFJ can have that TINI loop, whereas with ENFJ, the TI is more aspirational. And yeah, it's like I want to be able to do that synthesis and transcend, two, like two factions are fighting, mm -hmm. uh, like with politics at work all the time. I want to be able to, to say, here, here, clearly, here's this third perspective. Here's what can cut through this and bring it all together and I want to be able to do that but I just it's like I don't have the I can't work T. it all out I can't I don't have enough TI or something well well if it makes you feel better 
I can work it all out and they still won't listen. <laughs> yeah. So what you should do is you need to whisper in the oh, ear no. of an ENFJ and then they will convert people. Tag teams. You can, you can be my puppet. I'm I'll, just I'll... more the... Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you got the, the counsellor, so the advisor to the cult leader. The mm -hmm. ENFJ cult leader. Um, yeah. Pulling your strings. Right, so we've got the next my one. Is... Oh no! Okay. And, and on my um, because uh, I think you've got nice scan up there, Rachel, where it's like I've underlined the bits that are about change. So, for instance, in like the first block, we've got foresee a problem that hasn't come up yet. So it's not like because sociologists calls it intuition of time. Mhm. Mm and then the second one at the bottom. Achieve a, metamorphos a metamorphosis, uh -huh. intuitive insights, yeah. or powerful vision of change. See, when it says achieve it, that seems like a, it could be N-I-S-E, like bringing the insight into reality. Mm. I could have all these visions of, yeah. I could have all these powerful visions of cheese and all that, but bringing them into reality is a slightly more challenging prospect. That requires effort, you know. And that might be more easy for um, Rachel, because she's got launch at Essie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's taking yeah. And in Barons, the ENFJ is the in charge type. So they are like the leaders. That's the leader of the idealist temperament. So the four leaders are ESTP, ENFJ, ESTJ, and ENTJ. They're the leaders of their temperament. Hmm. They call it, the Barons call that the in-charge type trademark. Uh, and then we've got uh, any, anything to say about say about that line? Powerful vision of change is just a little bit too abstract to talk about. As usual, yes. Right. Yeah, okay, then we, I think we've kind of touched on it already. Now, this one I think Rachel might do quite a bit. Uh, transform yourself in a specific way by focusing inward on a way you f oh, or maybe both of you transform yourself in a specific way by focusing inward on a way you foresee you'll need to be in the future. Hmm. See, this makes me th this makes me think of all the ways I'd like to be in the future. Like, I'd love to be. I've always wanted to master martial art, for example, and I've got some experience with that. But I need to really get back into that sometime. Master the art, master languages, and get a proper higher degree or postgraduate degree or something, and the uh, great writer, and author, and creature, whatever, and all this stuff. Just, I'm just imagining all the ways I could be in the future. Yeah, that so I spent too much time thinking about rather than getting around to doing. But <laughs> but do you feel that you will need to be any of those things? Psychologically, yes, I will need to be those things because otherwise I'll just be lost. Okay, uh, well, that makes sense. It's also, if I want to achieve more social, maybe more social objectives, maybe, maybe more charitable, I suppose I don't need to do this to be more charitable or anything, but I would feel like I'm in a stronger position to be charitable and helpful if I've got all this. I'm a better person myself and it makes it easier to help others and contribute more. Okay, yeah. It's probably, what I probably should be doing is just going out there and helping people and keep doing that anyway, and then that'll, that'll come along with it, but... I'm the yeah. same way. I have that same kind of dilemma, that I'm, I'm not where I need to be yet to mm -hmm. be able to help, but then I'm like, well, maybe, I, yeah, maybe I should just do it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I have that same thing. Yeah, the future can actually be like a, a day or two from now. Uh, for instance, if my goal is to get well, I transform myself, maybe letting go of some unrealistic expectations and other psychological garbage, trying to mm. focus on what's important. And mm -hmm. Most of the stuff I get sick with is uh, psychosomatic. And usually it's some uh, like a signal for me to rearrange myself. Oh. Hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, I relate to that as well. It's like a psychosomatic. Mm, that might be a little ni nisi little battle thing going on there. Mm. Anyway, my dinner just arrives. So I need to. Uh, I mean, it'd be great. You know, I, I don't mind people eating during the hangouts. Well, it's very rude. But okay. I was told it was very rude, but okay, fine. Give me a Excellent. few seconds. Give me a Excellent. couple of minutes just to. It, it makes it. I mean, I mean, people I eat at dinner, at dinner parties in front of each other. <laughs> this is a dinner party hangout. Yes, okay. a dinner party. Why? Right. It makes it all more interesting. Okay, give me a few minutes then. To Excellent. Check. Okay. Excellent. So, um, I can ask for Rachel. Hi, Ma Hi, Hi. Maria. Yeah. Hi. Rare uh, well, appearance of Maria on remember, camera. Uh, they are also watching cartoons, so I cannot keep the sound on. So dinner party, oh, excellent. whatever. Ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> I like your hair, Maria. So, um, so yeah, we've got this next. Uh, I sent the scans to uh, uh, Maria as well. Private scans that will not be distributed on the internet, or Dario will kill me. Um, so uh, we have here. So we've got the top of page 73, and uh, I've marked it up as well, if you can see that. Uh, I've put... So it'll be the third scan. Because I've tagged a little bit of it that I think might be control any where, because... The theory is in Socionica, the uh, well, Vitter system, that INFJ thinks about any things a lot, but they don't implement them, they don't act on those ideas because it runs contrary to their grand vision. So it's like it's almost like they'll ignore a tangents. Whereas, as you know, any DOMs, they go on their tangents, they follow the tangents because they see... It's almost like they're led by their nose, and their their nose is NE. They're sort of mm -hmm. led by, oh, I'm going to go in this area, I find it interesting, whereas uh, NI DOMs, where it's like, oh, they'll have an eye. No, it doesn't fit the master plan, especially INTJ. We, mm -hmm. haven't, we don't really know what mm -hmm. goes on inside an INTJ's head. With, um, because they don't express it. So, um... Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> No, really. I mean, E.G. and D got it right when he called him the closet emo nerd. So maybe <laughs> it's like the well, closet INFP is what uh, ENTJ is. A closet, like. I, a closet INFP? Yeah, F-I-N-X. <laughs> oh, wait, are we talking about uh, ENTJ or INTJ? INTJ. Maria said that um, yeah. INTJ can do like a beneficiary shift to, I, to INFP. Uh, FINX, that when yeah. they first meet them, they'll talk about their values. Yeah. Uh -oh. So, yeah, so what do you think... Oh, oh, I almost read it out, but I've got to realise I mustn't read that out. So I'm, this is going to be one of these bits where I won't read it out. What do you think... Uh, actually, I... Actually, I won't read well, that bit out. What do you, oh, should I read that bit out? Um... I suppose we can talk about that a little bit. I don't know who's car that me. is. Me... Right. Okay. Right, so we've got this bit where it says, um, I'll read out the first sentence. Um, At the core of introverted intuiting is a meta perspective, the highest level or the most flexible frame of mind or form of behavior that each of us currently has access to. Right. Okay. Right, and then I won't say the rest, by the book, folks, but it's an idea that um, you're shifting between different perspectives and insights, and you're bringing things together in a synthesis of um, different angles. Uh, so when you read that, Rachel, do you think he's talking about NI, or is it a little bit mixed in with NE? 
He's putting some other functions in there. Is he getting at the root of things, um, or is he coming up with his own function to sell a book? Functions. Because <laughs> it is interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the core of it, I think the core of it really is there. Um, it, it's just such an inherently hard thing to describe. I could probably give you an example of, um, and I work in uh, like a blog post. I was recently um, talking about something like what uh, that, uh, that, that g generosity, in my opinion, is a survival me mechanism. Uh, and uh, I got a lot of like positive feedback from INTJs because they like generosity being discussed in the context of power and not in the like or a tool not as something nice because mm. they hate nice you know there is that song uh, line that uh, I, I feel so wrong doing the right things that's about break F F E and they yeah, like yeah. I I saw when I was talking about how, how generosity makes us feel more powerful I, uh, they like how I shaved all the FE fuzz of it. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's like the, the way Dario describes FE in his FE chapter in this book, where it's like he stresses the benefits to the individual. <laughs> so it's like not FE for its own sake. It's just things like, oh, if you improve your FE, you'll get a good reputation, better reputation, and it's good to have a good reputation. And you have to actually tell INTJs these things. They have to learn that, because usually they don't care what strangers think. Because it's like, yeah. I don't know them. Because they probably think, oh, I don't I care what they think. I got that when I was reading the, the extroverted feeling. Um, they actually, they, they are known to avoid some um, old things. But you know, why he get the mental of Oh dear. You're back now, Rachel, I think. You're back? Let's have a look. Let's... Uh, uh, yep, yeah. So, what, what were you saying there, Rachel? Hello? Well, uh, Maria last spoke. Um... I, I was just saying that for extroverted feeling, I think that the core is there in what Dario wrote, that it's yeah. a giving giving relationship. It's just a, uh, it's, I mean, that's really the core of it. It's like you're there, like extroverted yeah. feeling. For me, I'm there for someone. I'm, I make my presence very clear that I am there to give to them. And that's like my primary thing. Like, hey, like, how can I support you and give something of myself? to, you know, to help for whatever. But, yeah, he, he goes on to talk about a lot of different ways that, yeah, that that's kind of like a tool or... Um, that's a good point. Uh, he, Jonathan, he, Jonathan's written inside... Um, uh, I'm, I can probably read it out. I'll, I'll wait for confirmation that I can read it out. If he uh, puts a little yes, then I'll read it out. If he doesn't, then I won't. Oh, yes, I can read it out. INTJs care what strangers think. They just don't like to admit it, even to themselves. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, I think. But the way they experience. behave, sometimes... But sometimes, the way... I mean, there's the more unhealthy ones behave. And it's like when they behave on Facebook, I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> it's... I think maybe they can lose themselves they, when they, they, they fail to consider it in the moment. They consider... Because you can get that the thing on the internet where they don't know the person and it's like they can sort of like flame and they sort of like act as... Like if they would like talk to the person face to face they wouldn't act like that. Mm-hmm. And they can... 
I mean, of course, the 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 healthy INTJs will go towards some sort of system to help with their brake function. To try and but because it's not a natural process for them, it's something that they've really worked on. And Dario has really worked on it. He's um, he's been into NLP for over thirteen years. He's been leading workshops. He's been uh, a college lecturer. So he sees these as things which are a skill that are useful. Uh, but if it's a situation of FE versus TE, he's going to go with the TE thing. Mm -hmm. So he sees, and, and, and that's how he does the FE chapter, isn't he? He, he emphasizes... Um, the practical benefits of FE, whereas someone like ESFJ is, they're not thinking about the practical benefits of it. They're just being a nice person. Right. In right. the moment. Because they're focused right. on the other person. Right. They're, they're, the... Yes. It's just very, yeah. It's, it's, it's very opposite of an INTJ in many ways. I mean, because I'm not. And my mom tells me this all the time as an ESFJ. She says any time that she's thinking about herself, she ends up being miserable. So she just doesn't think about herself and just focuses on other people and what she can do for them, like to be helpful or to be nice. And then she and said that's when she feels healthy and happy, and that's just her natural state. So she's talking to someone, and she sees joy in someone's face. Does that have like such a positive effect on her? the feeling, I do too, that emotional merging. We want that like communal feeling going on. That's what we live for. Is that we're, we just want that. We want that to feel that, that unity and feel a positive state, be able to improve someone's state and then ex kind of experience it with them. You know? Um, yeah. Or provide just the empathy, just provide empathy for whatever state someone else is in so that they have the chance to feel supported. Maybe they don't want to feel better, you know, but uh, an FE Dom is going to be the one to just put it out there. Like, hey, so know, the way my support. Right, so if we get them back on track a little bit to so NI, um, the, the way Dario describes meta perspective. To me, that's not yeah. really an NI thing. I think he's getting. A, I'm looking at. I'm now going to switch to so put my socionics hat on and say that sounds more like TI minus. That sounds more like you multi-angle thinking that INTPs do, where we'll go. Well, if we look at it from this angle, so an example in typology. Well, if we look at Kersey, if we look with socionics, if we look with Enneagram. We look at things from these different angles, and then we get the meta perspective based on looking at something from different angles. And Vitz would say that's holographic panoramic thinking. Uh, so I don't think that now maybe Ni could be maybe he's seeing it as a synthesis where all this is going on in the unconscious, where you take all this information in, then suddenly you have a aha realization which has synthesized it. But maybe the the INTP is TINX is doing it more consciously, and it's hard to see the NI in action. Yeah, it's tricky. Well, and I think when an INTP does it, um, I don't know if you would agree with this, but I feel like it's less flexible because I think the flexibility of the frame of mind here is key with the introverted intuition. It's just so open and just so malleable. It's much more like a soup, like this sort of soup of symbols and meaning and whatever else. Uh, whereas maybe T-I-N-E, I feel like it's working with more, like, definitions and, you know, concrete building blocks, cause and effects. And it's not so... Uh, it's not so flexible just by the nature of what it is, although INTPs can consider so many different perspectives at once, and but they're still going to want to uh, 
I, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure I would call it a meta perspective. I think the meta implies, like what he's saying is this highest level where it's just. Completely you can see it values NI, it. can't you? Huh? I mean, it's basically saying there that it's the best function. No, it's not like yeah, that. I, mean, I, mean, I think that's what Dario is saying when he says the highest level of awareness. Come on, Dario, you're saying NI is the best function there. <laughs> Be honest. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say the highest level, but I agree with the most with a flexible frame of mind. Uh, and I, could I, even call it the, I could even yeah. I could even call it the lowest. I could call it the lowest level. Yeah. Because I, it's so it's like void. You can go into a void. Yeah, you Just, can call it deepest or highest or because uh, you know the um, the connotations of high are uh, getting in the way. High is something positive. I would object to that. <laughs> oh yes, the ni dark side. Yeah, because I would use deep because n not many people assign positivity to it. I would say deep as well. Deep seems more accurate. Right. I'm not. I'm not going to put the camera on because I'm going to make a mess. Okay. Fair enough. I think you caught that on camera. I thought we saw you like from sideways. Then I saying NI is the best function. Yeah. Then I then I started eating and I brought my food. So. <laughs> <laughs> best, well, to was, best to do it off camera. Jonathan once chided me for killing a spider on air when it was in the middle of the hangout with Kristen. No, not Kristen. Uh, Crystal. Yeah, you and Crystal were what talking. I wasn't there. I would have stopped you. <laughs> Well, that was that was the a Star Wars thing. Fear turns to anger, anger turns to hate, hate turns to suffering, and the spider suffered. Uh, right. Um, so the meta perspective. Okay. Then he's got stuff on best use activities. Uh, we won't quote that out uh, too much. Oh man, you can tell me what you think of that though, Rachel, from the the best use activities. Um. As far as like, as far as what? Was well, what you think of it? Do you think it? Do you agree with it? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's just a lot about. Um. Just I mean, I think I think I can tell which are Dario's four favorite functions from this book. Go on. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Go on. That he values TE more than TI, and that he oh. values FI more than FE, and that he values NI more than NE, and SE more than SI. <laughs> the gamma <laughs> functions are really, I think, like, more enthusiasm for them. Well, uh, duh, <laughs> you know, as we see. Yeah, I know, but, but, but it backs up. But it backs up. Yeah, but it backs up those people that don't think Dario is gamma. It's like, duh, read the book and you'll see he is so gamma. Because, because what people see with Dario upon, upon first seeing it is they see the social skills that he has learned. Hmm. So some people will say, oh, he could be an ENFJ. Look at this charisma that he's showing. No, that's learned skills. And he took, and there's also a, ch a, a section towards the back of the book called uh, uh, Preference versus Skill. And like I said, he's used NLP to improve skills that we would normally associate with FE. <laughs> I, I find the logical subtype of NTJ is compared to social skills or seems more normal and more FE than the intuitive subtype. The two of the subtype did be a lot slower, more carefully, and a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's harder for them to express what they're doing with that NI. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's and it's tough because people there's a natural kind of distrust. I feel like towards the NI INTJs, people just aren't quite sure. They're just they feel like they're unpredictable, so they kind of get that. <coughs> I don't know. <coughs> 
in the way Dario talks about this function in glowing terms, I'll just read out one sentence, it won't kill me for this. The result is a wellspring of originality, innovation, and transformation. Yeah. And then, yeah I, I think that's a good metaphor, the wellspring. I think that is pretty, so, pretty good. Uh, what we're saying about the value of functions in terms of gamma, like there's a little section in SE where um, he talks about, so this is Dario's view of any. I'll just read this little bit, it won't kill me for this bit. Uh, uh, staying in the context is particularly, so this is for Essie. Staying in the context is particularly challenging for those who prefer extroverted intuiting. Practice staying relevant to the context. When you go off at a, tan when you go off at a tangent or bring in outside context, you distance yourself from the context and ruin the experience of you in the, using this process for everyone else. So <laughs> we're seeing nothing. <laughs> well, that's probably what I'm doing. Oh, dear. You're not ruining the experience, though. That's not fair. I'm not what? You're not. Yeah, ruin, it's just, you're not ruining yeah. the experience. Oh, thank you. That's yeah, that's you, not but, you, but you do I'm, go off topic. This yes, <laughs> but it's generally it's still within the realm of typology, though. Sometimes I digress, I digress onto economics, but generally it's still within the realm. Of typology, so it's usually digressing onto something that you're still interested in, in general. I hope. Yeah, I think that might just be. I think that's some useful advice there coming from the INTJ. I think that's some. I, I I agree with it, but I'm not saying it's ruining. I don't I don't see it as ruining the experience for an INTJ. It might be ruining their experience because they're <laughs> trying to get understand whatever they're trying to do or something. I don't know. Maybe. And Kersey, Kersey Jr. said that when he interacts with an INTJ and he does this thing about talking about different intellectual topics, that the INTJs would sort of describe that as flakiness. It's like, why are you doing this? Why are you don't... Because so, like, the, the field of computing is full of INTPs and INTJs. So, mm -hmm. very aware of the differences between those two types. Mm -hmm. Just, and again, Dario... He's, uh, so look at the comparison between Dario and, and Kersey Jr. Dario has a background in computing. And at, at the back of the book, mm. he says that I mean, he created an artificially intelligent uh, social bot, a virtual robotic agent capable of social behavior. And he's done other things to do with computing, and he's able to analyze the data from the EEG models, all the statistical methods that he has. So he's very much interested in systems, complex systems and things. Uh, right. Are we still in page two? By the way? No, we go to page 74. Um, oh, page four, more or less. Yes. Of this chapter. Right then. It's got stuff in there. We might we might do a repetitive exercise or concentrate on a Mandela. What is a Mandela? I think it's like a, a round. I think it's. I was almost said a round circle there. A, a circle. I have one. Aha! Uh -huh. But you can't see the whole thing. You can't. It's folded up right now, but right. it makes a Mandela. Yeah. See. That. Oh wow! See, Beth, I think you're mispronouncing it because I keep on thinking of Nelson Mandela every time you say that. Oh right. I think it's I think it's Mandela. Okay, Mandela. <laughs> oh, I mean, perhaps Nelson Mandela does have his uses for this, but I don't. <laughs> we concentrate on Mandela, and he will make us go and present in in eye modes. The more you think of Nelson Mandela, the more in eye you become. Me? Yeah. Anyone, really. Anyone could. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. no, I did create yeah. a Mandela for myself, though. I called it the the Convertigram. <laughs> for, uh, I based it on the, 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 uh, the Podlayer Mandela. The Mandela. And, uh, and I did the Convertigram for converting between Socionics, Kersey, and MBTI. And I, I, Right, so while we go on, look at the next bit. So what do you think of that paragraph which is above the diagram? Oh yeah, and I'll put some notes in the um, 
we we make, must, um, uh, Rachel. We might conjure up fictional or real person in our mind and engage in an inner dialogue with that person. Yes, hey, I do hey, whoa, 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 don't quote too much there, Jonathan. People've got to buy the book. <laughs> anyway, yes, I do that all the time. Yeah. I talk I talk with people who aren't there all the time. <laughs> I am seen. Yeah, so Rachel, I'll put at the top of page 74, um, uh, when it says a sudden realisation or aha moment, I've put, um, uh, very consistent with Jungian NI, intuition is perception by means or ways of the unconscious. That was how Jung himself described it. And in fact, I could read that out. Mm. So, Carl Jung won't won't put a hit on me, so I can read this bit out. Um, <laughs> so, da, 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 number one. Right, Carl, so this Young, is the, Carl, Carl Young, Young can, can reach from beyond the grave, you know. Right, okay. So, yeah, I wouldn't be so sure. Okay, here we go. Sensation tells you that there is something. Thinking, roughly speaking, tells you what it is. Feeling tells you whether it is agreeable or not to be accepted or not, accepted or rejected, and intuition, there is a difficulty. Now, I got this from the interview with Carl Jung in the 1950s, the black and white interview. Uh, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. And there is a difficulty with intuition. You don't know ordinarily how intuition works. So when a man has a hunch, you can't tell exactly how he got at that hunch or where that hunch comes from. It is something funny about intuition. And then he tells a story about a couple watching birds dive into a lake and then trying to work out who would know where the bird would come up. And there was a man who was a sensing type and a woman who was an intuiting type. And he said that the intuiting type woman was better at predicting where the bird would resurface with the fish than the sensing mm -hmm. male. Mm -hmm. Um and they had a bet, and she won. And then that, now that's number one. Now number two is, then he talks about, then he gives the definition of NI. Uh, it is, is it, it is, or intuition in general. Uh, right. It is a perception by intermediate links, and you only get the result of that whole chain of association. So it's almost like an unconscious TI. So sometimes you succeed in finding out, but more often you don't. So my definition is intuition is a perception by ways or means of the unconscious. That is as near as I can get. So again, all the chain of associations is unconscious. Uh -huh. Well, I'm kind of somewhat in touch with it because I kind of a vague well, idea of how it works sometimes, but... But, and it's almost like once you've got the result that pops into your consciousness, he says that sometimes you're able to work back and then articulate your working. Yeah. Your intermediate links to how you got there. But sometimes you can't. Yeah. I mean, have you ever had that information where, oh, I just know, I can't explain it, I just know. Yeah, see, some other times I can, other times I can work back and I can realise that it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, there's no logical reason why I should know this or think this. <laughs> but I do. Mm. And then there's a bit from Jung where now which even though it's ten years thing, right? So Jung offers a mechanism for how NI works. So NI can predict the future. Okay, how does NI predict the future? How does it work? And so this is the mechanism. The mechanism. I'll read this out and then I'll explain it a bit more. The archetype would be to borrow from Kant the noumenon of the image which intuition perceives and in perceiving creates. Its prophetic foresight is explained by its relation to the archetypes which represent laws governing the course of all experience of all things. So basically, the NI type has a connection to the archetypes and it's the archetypes yeah, so that, that give you the information yeah. about the future. Because the archetypes represent these universal patterns like an archetypal yeah. pattern, an archetypal image. The, and the reason why they are archetypes is that they've stood the test of time. And you notice these in different cultures in their creative output, especially their writings. Over to Rachel. <laughs> oh, no. 
So one size will fit. Because I've studied, but like the new. Uh, well, I was just gonna say, it's like. So is it like the intuitive is focusing more on the noumena rather than the phenomena? Because phenomena is kind of an effect or maybe something that sensors are more well, in tune with, which is well, what we have in front of us here. But it's a, it's like what we what we see around right. us isn't the thing in, in itself. It's, it's the NI type is perceiving things unconsciously and. They're in touch with the archetypes, hmm. and he defines the archetype as uh, they archetypes. They represent laws governing the course of all experienceable things, and so these the three things, these archetypal things, are handed down through hmm. collective experience. And if you have a connection to these archetypes, these universalities of human nature you're then able to see how things will develop because you're in touch with these universalities at an unconscious level. See, well, I would, I would say that I notice, I notice archetypes and I see archetypes before I see details. So it's like I see the forest instead of the trees. It is, over time I've noticed, I'm more used to seeing them than other things and so I can see patterns that other people don't necessarily see. Uh, I don't know if I this is okay to you know, to quite to unconscious or anything. It may just be how my brain works, but I'll notice all those things. And I will also say that any types, especially any DOMs, may probably especially ENFPs, I think, would really resist that I, idea in a way. Like they want to create new archetypes or new possibilities. They don't like being constrained by the old patterns and the old ways. Right. And I can find that a little bit. Annoying myself at times, like it can feel quite unoriginal at times. Um, I bought this book. And I was at a messier stage in my life, so I'm going to buy a new version of this and have nicer notes, and then mark it up and show it. But I'll read this bit out. Some good stuff here from Jung and Ni. Uh, like sensation, intuition has its subjective factor, which is suppressed as much as possible in the extroverted attitude, but is the decisive factor in the intuition of the introvert. So it's talking about the NI Dom. Although his intuition may be stimulated by external objects, it does not concern itself with external possibilities, but with what the external object has released within him. Whereas introverted sensation is mainly restricted to the perception via the unconscious of the phenomena of innovation, i.e. the stimulation of the nerves, and is arrested. So this is where it gets complicated. Whereas introverted sensation is mainly restricted to the perception via the unconscious of the phenomena of innovation and is arrested there, introverted intuition suppresses this side of the subjective factor and perceives the image that caused the innovation. Now, but by image, he sort of means like an archetypal image. Mm -hmm. So it's like you going beyond the image that you see to the thing behind it that you can't see, but maybe that you know behind the actual image. Whereas if you think of the S, or the way Jung can see the SI DOM, it's like these images are within them. So they can see these images in them, in their mind. And ISFPs and ISTPs can do them as well, but the introverted intuitive type goes beyond that, another level of depth beyond subjective sensing. Yeah, we're pretty awesome. That's how I interpret it. Oh yeah, Dario is very much into Carl Jung. Right. Mm. Right. So we are now back. Mm. Right. Right. Then we've got this diagram. Oh, oh, yes, do you have premonitions? I think you said you, you do have premonitions. Uh, yes, because you talked about um, everyone becoming SJ in future. Yes. That would be good. That will not be good. <laughs> Depends what kind of SJ they are. Right. Hmm. Right. Right. If it's, if it's a whole caliphate, maybe not so good. Oh, dear, political ban. 
Right. Uh, cognitive snapshot of introverted intuitant. <sighs> what do you think of that? Sorry, what did you say? We've got the cognitive snapshot of introverted intuiting. It's that little box at the bottom of page oh, that. 74. Ooh. Hmm. I suppose. I tend to think more like. I think Hegel, Hegel the German philosopher, yeah. was. And I and TG and so they like because they like to think that seems closer to, you know, thesis antithesis synthesis. Yeah. It's, it's more how my brain works. <laughs> I think Rachel's having trouble with her computer. I mean, it's, I should comment on that. Okay, excellent. Right, and then there's a little bit here. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll read. How is that excellent? You can't go no, on. No, 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 excellent that you've told me, that you've informed me. Um, that, uh, I'll quote this, this last couple of sentences out. So you still buy the book, folks. Applying often means transformation. Trying out a new way to be or a new way to think. We reflect on our meta perspective by asking, is there synergy? Um, people should be intrigued. So you want to understand it by the book, right? Right, that's a good one. I'll, I'll, I'll read that quote out. Uh, the most powerful meta perspectives result in a transformation, synthesis, or paradigm shift. Do you think you get that with an eye, Jonathan? A paradigm shift. Hmm. Maybe you've experienced some some paradigm shifts. I have, yes. Uh, we'll just continue reading. Yeah, I mean, he is seeing the most powerful meta perspective, so it's more like this is the aha moment again. I think it's it's not something that just happens all the time. It's more like every now and then you get this real insight. And uh, you know, so that problem has been bugging you for ages, will just suddenly be eliminated. Or you'll you find that last piece of the puzzle where you weren't expecting it, and there it is. Excellent. Let's have a look who we got there. We've got. Oh, she's there. There she is. All oh, right. All oh, right. She studied psychology. Who? Who uh, uh, we'll refer to her as Dizzy Dolly because that's her YouTube. Because uh, hmm. she, she, she's done videos on YouTube about stalkers. So she actually, I think she did a video on the four different kinds of stalkers. And she's done. Uh, she, I think she's got a psychology degree as well. So uh, and she's and she's INTJ, I think. Um, so what you've read there, Jonathan, what do you think of it? I think it's all right, just that... I mean, again, this is more like how other people can use NI and how... Or expo explaining NI to other people rather than... Uh, or people who are new to technology, I suppose. But, uh, Yeah, I mean, it's, it does its job. Right. <laughs> it's not, it's not as a bad description. It's just that this, probably because it's, I've been into this for about 
nearly two years now. Uh, you know, it's not offering me anything new. Right, okay. At this stage, right. Here we go. So now we've got the next bit about mindset and feedback. I don't know if you were referring to that. What do you think of that? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can wait to that. Uh, trans like we and emptying your mains. Do you think emptying your mind is easier for NI types than any types? Yes. Mm. I'm so sorry. Huh. We don't want to empty our minds. No, you're missing so much though. There's so much clutter in there. <laughs> That's possibly how we come across. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've put here sounds like NI suppressing SI because the way it says it talks about illusions and stuff, can we? It's almost like you have to discard the SJ way of viewing things in, in order to go into that NI mode. You know, in the mindset and feedback. Because mm -hmm. it's like lining up NI is different from SI. Because it's like, SI is about you're doing the same thing, you are what you are, you continue the process, and NI is about change. So you can see how he's opposed them there. Yeah. In a sense, but it still seems more conflicted with NE to me than SI, because... Oh yeah, you'll get that as well, yes. I mean, because SI and NE work in tandem. Mm. And NI and SE work in tandem. I think SI kind of assumes it's got a synergy and assumes it's, it has the realization already. So it takes things for granted. So we've, they, we've, they, we've been able to retain an audience of two viewers. And that's quite high for the, these kind of hangouts. Right, so we're doing well. <laughs> Fine. That's pretty low standards. Right. <laughs> so I it'll be an intelligent audience. I think it may be a good idea to do a part two at some point because... Yeah. I mean, this is... We're not even halfway through this chapter. Yeah, I think you might be right. So how much more time can you give us, Jonathan? I don't think... To be honest, I think I'll need to wrap it up because... Right, okay. Yeah. I mean, right, right. I'm, I'm not that... It's better if we had some more people here or something, but... Okay, okay. So maybe we could go turn down to where, just before it goes, before case studies. Right, mm -hmm. so basically okay. the next thing would be talking yeah. about possible misuses. And then we could end there and then resume it at a later date. Right. Uh, Yeah. Can't stop thinking to relax, experience a hyper intense focus while mulling over a problem to get a solution. Yes, I can definitely do that. Just get completely distracted by my ideas and so on without you know, losing track of things. You keep advising a specific fantastic image, yes. Keep having a particular scary dream, I don't think I'd have that problem. I think I've had that... I had that a little bit when I was younger, but I don't think I had it any more than most people. Just recurring dreams. Wouldn't they say they were scary either. I had nightmares when they were recurring. Right. <laughs> Follow a system for thinking that is perceived by others as strange and inscrutable. That is NITE. <laughs> I think for myself, thank you very much. My own systems. And we've got, uh, final two bullet points of this hangout. Uh, 
overly focused on self-development at the expense of practical daily needs. We all are focused on self-development to the point I don't actually do any self-development. <laughs> yeah, self the self-development theory. Yeah. Or I developed my mental powers, I suppose, quite well. My mind, so on. Hmm. We're so focused on innovating or doing something in a novel way, we don't realise we're really reinventing the wheel. Yeah, I can always, I always get this urge to try something new and so on. I get a little bit annoyed when a, an idea we're working on or something I'm thinking about a lot, just where I recognise these patterns again, when I see the same old stuff. Like, it's just not as original as I hope, thought it would be or hoped it would be. It's like a crave originality, but I can't really get it. Right. Yeah, you. It's really good when I'm starting a brand new subject or a novel, whatever is a totally new world, uh, or a new subject, whatever. That just makes my mind feel really fresh and so on. But eventually, that feeling fades a little bit to normalcy. Right. So that might be a, a place to end, and uh, we will continue. <coughs> In the next part, uh, we are doing the heck out of NI. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anything else to say, Jonathan? No, not really. Uh, Maria, do you have anything to say about what you've heard in the last since the, you last spoke? Um, I will. I. I'm gonna digress. I. I was thinking uh, after. It was discussed in many ways that um, I, um, in Jungian perspective, yes, I is something like uh, compressed as over the time uh, and experience. And, uh, I'm, I'm starting to think that ME may be uh, also like a storehouse of an eye, uh, which is uh, stockpiled by by the humanity and transformed into something. I think I tend to think of any &E as more like an explosion of ideas, an explosion of fireworks and possibilities, whereas NI is more like you see all these possibilities but you focus on the patterns. It's like I could kind of, I can see all the possibilities but they're sort of around me, whereas they're not, what I'm focused on is the, the patterns and things that are going to happen, or likely to happen, and so on. Yeah, uh, but... Uh, nevertheless, you, you can think of an E uh, as somebody, somebody's an I that has been actualized and is already mm. present. Mm. It's also, it's, when it's any, it's something external. Even if it's an external thought, an external uh, piece of knowledge that you're connecting to. And so, it, there's a chapter towards the end where there are um, sort of a subchapter where it talks about tandem use. And he got this information from Linda Behrens. Because although Linda Behrens is sort of a big influence from David Kersey, she also became interested in functions and innovated in some of the theory behind the functions. And she innovated in the realm of, like, tandem use of functions. Um, so it's like, the, together would be like sifting through what is known to discover patterns. Uh, so any working with MBTI, SI. Well, I think you once said, I think you said in the Hangout with Chris Montoya, right, uh, you said um, something like, intuition is a daughter of knowledge. Uh, it, yeah, it's a well-known thought, but um, basically, if sensation goes from outside in, and you, um, you must be in the present to get your sensations, but then they become experience, and they... they uh, you store that experience for future use, and that would be a fact. But intuition tends to go in the opposite direction. It, um, like uh, when civilization is young, most knowledge comes as a religious experience. But then it starts being pres preserved in like libraries and whatnot, and like methods. Um, 
and then it becomes more of an E. So what did you think of that, Jonathan, when she said mentioned religious experience when Jung for NI, I think. Uh, hmm. I thought they had to ponder. Hmm. So uh, if, if 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 you had your webcam on at the moment, we'd be able to see the pondering gesture. But yeah. Uh, right. So I think. Well, if when early scientists would come up with things, it it all often required well. some uh, state of trance and whatnot. Uh, it would come in uh, NI way, but uh, nowadays you get a lot more from books. Yes, and it's easy to. Yeah, it's and easy it makes sense that it's symmetrical with the uh, way you um, you acquire uh, like introverted sensation. So uh, if sensation goes from outside in, the intuition should go from inside out. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, as a person progresses or a, huma a humanity progresses? Both. Well, <laughs> the way I see it uh, is... My, my browser is acting up, so I think I'll have to go because it's, this thing's freezing now. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll end Sorry. this by saying how I view how any works, and which is in line with Cole, okay. is where you are something outside of you stimulates you and you make a connection to something within your knowledge base where you can uh, and so in generally uh, any types are interested in a lot of different things so they have a lot of things that they can connect to but any is dependent upon having this wide base of knowledge of things that you can connect things that you can find patterns amongst and so I give the example of Douglas Adams. He had this problem of how do you rescue Arthur and Ford when you've been thrown out into space? And um, so he had that problem. And every solution he came up with was highly improbable. So he had that problem going on. And then he's watching a judo match. He's watching a judo, a Pokemon judo, and the instructor says uh, something like, you have to use the weight of the opponent against himself. So he thought, hang on a minute. So using the size of the problem against itself, the weight of the problem against itself. So what is the nature of the problem I'm dealing with here? Well, every solution is really improbable. Okay, well, how do I then make the problem the solution? So the, so the able to make the comparison, to see the comparison across contexts, but you have to have something to compare it to. And so any types... And especially like INTPs, who are Enneagram 5, they were interested in lots, so many different things that they have lots of things to compare to. Because their, their mindset, you could say the mindset of INTP, you could sum up in two words, comparative analysis. Love to do. They love the comparative analysis. And then they can see the patterns and then get a, a meta perspective. Always, and that's what I try to do with the way I mark things up is like I'm oh, going oh well, this bit matches model G or this bit could be a bit like this subject and so if you imagine an INTP who's imagine an INTP that's in their 60s they have all these theories and then they can make connections to so many different things or should be more any going on because uh, many more possible many more thing many more things to make connections to Right, I think I'll uh, end at that point. So uh, it's goodbye for me and goodbye from our previous guests, Jonathan and Rachel, and uh, probably from Maria as well. Yeah, okay. I'm sure Maria is no doubt thinking goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so oh, I'll stop it.